This is a review of Dark Souls 2 design works. And just like the art book for the first Dark Souls game, this one was originally published in Japanese, but the one we're looking at here today is the English version released by Udon. So I found the art book for the first Dark Souls game kind of underwhelming, but that is not the case with this one. This is a truly excellent art book. First and foremost, it's nearly twice the length of the first one, which really helps you feel like you're getting a much more substantial experience. But even more than that, it's the actual pieces of art in here themselves that are what really makes this book special and just even better than the works on display in the first book um, which is saying something because those were great but these ones are just every time you turn the page you are just met with something so cool the artworks they've selected really nail down that sort of Dark Souls aesthetic. And there are a couple of reasons why the art might be so much more spectacular this time around. It could be, you know, time, money. Um, the game does have a different director and a ton of new artists and designers. But it's probably just because this is a sequel. So the first game really set up the design parameters. And so when creating art for Dark Souls 2, they really know what they're working with and um, have really solidified and expanded the, the look of the Dark Souls world in a really great way. And this is the sort of book that I would easily recommend to people, even if you haven't played the game, if you're just a fan of fantasy artwork, specifically dark fantasy, because the stuff in here is just of such a, a high quality and so imaginative and inspiring. It's really great. I really can't speak highly enough of the designs they've showcased in this book. My only problems with the visuals in this book, and really my only problem with the book, is the layout. There are a few too many images that are reproduced too large to take up, you know, valuable page real estate. And then also just some really horrendous page layout. You'll see a number of instances of just big, blank, empty space that really could have been used to showcase more content. And here I'll show you the worst offender, not to sort of like put you off buying the book, but just to sort of, you know, illustrate a point and make fun. So look at this. This is crazy. So on the far left, we've got a big wall of white space. Then surrounding the image, there are two large black strips. And then the image itself has like a sixth of the image sort of running over onto the left page. And a lot of it is being, you know, the detail is being lost in this sort of center crevice. And I just look at stuff like this and I, I shake my head because I can't fathom why someone would do something like this like why wouldn't you just move the image to the right so that it takes up the whole right hand page and you can get rid of that stupid black bar and then use the left page to include some more up rather than doing something ugly and nonsensical like this i i can't even really fathom it because it's so unintuitive to have an image like the detail lost in the center like that when you could just position it slightly to the right and have a full page with no loss of detail i don't know um i guess i'm just pretty prickly about layout at the moment because um these last few days i've been kind of bossy and exacting with the design team for the art book I'm currently working on. But anyway, like I said, don't let stuff like that worry you. These sort of problems really only account for, you know, less than 15% of the book. And then as for the text, I was really kicking myself when I um, rewatched the review I did for the Dark Souls 1 art book, and I barely even mentioned the text, which is a shame because it was easily my favorite part of that book. I think I was just really thrown off by the fact that it was all um, positioned in the back of the book. And for the Dark Souls 2 art book, it's very similar. At the back, you sort of have a long form round table interview with the director and some of the concept artists. But what I did like is that in this one, they actually do sprinkle a couple of um, design comments throughout the book, which is definitely how they should have handled all the text, because it's kind of hard when you're reading and they're talking about a specific design, and then you have to flip all the way back through the book to find what exactly they're talking about. But in terms of the content of those interviews in the back, they're really good, especially in the first Dark Souls art book. I really should have mentioned that, because I think that the interview in that is even better and a little bit longer than the one in this. The type of things they discuss in this one um, are a little more similar to other art books with a lot of sort of stating the obvious and it feels very superficial. Whereas in the first Dark Souls art book, those interviews are, are really gold. It's some of the best 
sort of design commentary I have ever read for a game. They really discuss the whys and the reasoning behind things and the development of the designs. They're not afraid to tell you what they would have done differently or what the challenges were and specifically how they were overcome. Just intelligent, insightful stuff. Um, so it's kind of a bit disappointing for this book not to really live up to that um, in terms of the text. And in the review I did for the first book, I mentioned um, a couple of other Dark Souls and Dark Souls adjacent art books you might be interested in. And I referenced a book called The Art of the Dark Souls Trilogy, which I said I'd talk a bit more about in this video. So basically the collector's editions for Dark Souls 1 and 2 came with those useless little gimmicky art books that you sometimes see as part of collector's editions. But the Dark Souls 3 collector's edition came with a slightly better book, I guess, um, which was The Art of the Dark Souls Trilogy. Now it's a little confusing because there are actually two different editions of this book. Um, they have different covers, but also the insides are slightly different as well. And I really couldn't say which one is better. However, I don't think this matters because for everyone from, you know, someone who's just interested in these books for sort of the fantasy art, for everyone up to, you know, the pretty serious Dark Souls enthusiast, I really don't think you need to worry about that trilogy book because it's basically just a smaller, crappier version that takes, you know, a little bit of the art from these bigger main books and compiles them into one volume and so for most people i don't think you need to worry about that you'd be much much better served by just getting these individual art books really the only two groups i can imagine the trilogy art book appealing to is um, one of course if you are like the most crazed dark souls collector and you need everything as part of your collection then obviously or if you're someone who is like yeah i like the art but i don't think i need three of these big expensive books i'm just happy with sort of like one book as a memento of the art style for these games then i guess if you can find that trilogy book cheaper and you don't mind that you're missing out on a ton of stuff then maybe that is a better option for you but for 99 percent of people don't even worry about that one just focus on these um, bigger individual art books and then lastly, the Dark Souls 3 art book has already been released in Japanese, but I recommend that you don't go looking for that and just hold off for a little bit longer because Udon has already completed the translation for the third book. They're still just currently editing it, so I would be very surprised if we don't see the English translation and release sometime around the end of this year.